in this video we'll show you how we can import a DXF file directly into Partmaster CAM. Uh, so the CAM system is open, so if you go to File, Import, Solitary From, and we'll choose that DXF file. Uh, the DXF file doesn't contain data about whether it's in metric or imperial, so we need to switch it here. Okay, so that's that uh, file imported. So the first thing to do is the machine setup. And it's here where we check on the safety position and the home position for a rear or a front turret or tool post. So we can start off by defining a tool. So we go to define a tool. So we'll have a standard turning tool. Um, but the included angle on this is 80 degrees. So if we set that to a smaller angle such that that uh, will be able to machine most of that uh, shape. So we click OK, so that's defined the tool, now we need to select it for use. So this sets the spindle speed and the feed rate that we want to use, and also if we need to use coolant, we switch that on here. So the tool is now um, ready for use, and that's in the program operations window here. So we'll do a roughing operation. Uh, there's two types, turning which is towards the chuck and facing which is towards the centre line. So for this one we'll choose turn and the thing that it needs is the cycle limit. So these are the two corners of a rectangle where the tool will work between. So we can either type in the values here or we can choose them from the screen. So if we click on the choose button here we can just choose where we want to start. So that's the bottom right hand corner of a rectangle and this is the top left hand corner of the rectangle. So that just needs to be big enough for you to um, machine the area in question. If we want to we can leave a finishing allowance on here and this is where we set the cut depth for that tool. So this is the individual cuts. Okay, so that's uh, machined all of that. The default method of sewing the graphics is with the tool center line. If you want to animate the tool, you click here and then run. So here comes that tool. So the blue lines are at feed rate, the red lines are at rapid. this particular shape because of the uh, curves that are used to create it it's broken down into a series of very small uh, lines but uh, it doesn't matter really okay so when you're creating the turning macro uh, you can specify the area that you want uh, so for instance for the two undercuts um, here you could specify two different um, turning operations so that the tool only moves within those areas when it's cutting. Okay so that's uh, roughed out the shape leaving the finishing allowance on. Uh, now we can define a different tool so this time let's choose say a button tool and when we change the tip radius on there, the Z and X offsets are automatically updated. So now we select that tool for use. And we're going to do a profile turning operation next, which is a finishing operation. So uh, there's lots of uh, options uh, available on this. But if we just leave uh, all of the defaults as they are and click OK, we'll see what it wants to machine. So here's that tool cutting round there. Now it may well be that you don't want it to cut down that front face and you probably also don't want it to machine round uh, to the, uh, the back face which is what it will do as a default. But if we just let that uh, run you'll see uh, what it's doing. Uh, the other thing that uh, you can check on is over on the right hand side here there's a status panel and that shows you the uh, X and Z movements um, of that uh, tool. 
as I say, this is made up, uh, the shape is made up of uh, quite a lot of small line segments. So uh, if possible, when you're creating the geometry for this, if you can use uh, tangential arcs, the processing time will be that much greater. As you can see, it's going right down to the, the back face there because that's the uh, extent of the, um, the profile. But if we want to stop that doing, if we double click on the proton operation here um, and we go to the options tab, we can see here there's a partial machining operation which allows us to specify the spans that go to make up that uh, shape. And as you can see, there's 162 of them, but it's difficult to know which is which. So if we just cancel that, with the cursor in the uh, graphics area, if we right click and say number spans, then each of those spans is numbered as we can see here. So um, if we didn't want to machine uh, the first few spans, we could say start off at say span number seven, and then towards the back here, we could stop at span 161. Okay, so double click that. Click on the options, click at start at span number 107 and start at say, I'll finish at 161. Okay, so if we just switch on center line mode so that the graphics uh, run through that much quicker, okay, so we can now see the finishing pass which is cutting just along that. Uh, start of the arc there, machines all the way around and then it gets to the end point here and then it runs off with um, uh, an arc movement. But all of those things can be set using the approach and run off uh, buttons here and typing in the um, uh, value. Okay, so when we're happy with that, we could post-process that uh, and then send it to the machine tool. Um, with the laid standard module, you can also run a 3D simulation, but that's not available in uh, lathe basic. So that we'll choose um, a small lathe as opposed to a big uh, industrial lathe. So that's creating the file to send through to the simulator. Uh, we can leave all of these defaults as they are and just press simulate. So that calls up the machine tool simulator and then it passes it through the, uh, the data. Okay, so that's the uh, material. Uh, when we're running the simulator, we can show the stop as being transparent or we can show it as solid. And then we just use the video controls at the top here to control the tool path. So this is the uh, roughing tool. We can speed up or slow down the simulation. And if we wanted to get rid of the small pip here, then we could obviously start at span number one and uh, machine the whole thing. Uh, so that's the uh, simulator. And then the last thing would be to post-process via machine tool.